Hey everyone, it's Apostle Michelle Peterson, and so today I am doing part three of um, our love letter from God to you. And so, like I said in my last video, is that the Lord wanted me to go into more details and kind of just talk about um, this letter, things that he said in this letter uh, that he gave me, it's a message that he gave me. And so today we're going to talk about a part, um, the, the second part that is on there and the Lord here is talking about understanding me, learn, this is what he says, understand me, learn about me, research me in my word, seek me in my word, study my ways, my character, my needs. And so in my last video, I was, you know, I was talking about, wow, God actually has needs. And, you know, a lot of times we feel like God doesn't need anything from us, but he actually does have needs. He said he had needs. Study his needs. And I wrote down here um, what his needs are, what he said his needs are. His needs uh, are respect. He really needs and desire for us to respect him. Honor. His need is honor. He needs for us to honor him and to love him. These are the three things uh, that he was telling me his needs a respect from us, honor from us, and love from us. You know, it's, it's pretty cool that he actually needs those things from us. And then something else he says for us to um, learn and study and, and um, understand uh, is his wants. What are some of the things that God wants? Um, here I have, uh, he said that, I want my people to love me, honor me, and truly respect me. That's what he wants. And then he says for us to, to learn and, and um, study and all of this stuff about his heart, his love, and his will. So this is what he said. Understand me. This is what he desires for us to understand him, understand me, learn about me, research me in my word, seek me in my word, study my ways, my character, my needs, my wants, my heart my love, and my will. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray that everyone who desires, I'm going to pray that the Lord actually gives you understanding to be able to understand all of these things about him. And to, so today we're going to kind of just talk a little bit about that um, and go through some scriptures about, um, you know, how you can actually start reading God's word to understand him in his word, okay? Bless you, Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that you give your people that, that are listening to this video, Heavenly Father, I ask that you give them understanding of your ways, God, your character, your needs, your wants, your desires, your heart, Heavenly Father, and your love and your will, Father. I ask that you give them understanding of all of these things, Father, because this is your desire, Heavenly Father, for them to understand and know these things about you so whenever they are reading and researching you in your word father that you will help them to understand you to have understanding about you and who you are in your ways your love everything about you father in jesus name amen amen okay so you guys i wanted to just tell you guys a little story just just about um <laughs> me uh, having a problem with understanding um, something about God, you know, which I, I was asking him about this and I have it written down because I wanted to make sure I remembered to tell you guys about this. But I was having a tough time, like trying to understand why wouldn't the Lord just show me things, you know, show me what I need to do, show me, you know, when I'm being attacked. Uh, tell me things just kind of just go ahead and just tell me everything basically I was wondering why the Lord just didn't tell me everything and just kind of um, let me know everything um, you know so I just didn't have to experience certain things or go through, go through certain things that I will know the perfect path every time you know uh, I would do something I would just know exactly what to do because God would tell me and I was wondering why the Lord just didn't automatically uh, reveal all of this stuff to me. And so um, I was asking him, you know, why can't he just tell me everything, you know, so I'll just know everything automatically and, and not have to, you know, worry about um, everything. And so this is what he said. He said, everything has to go through humans. 
everything that's done here in this earth has to go through humans. That means even if, you know, there's something in front of us or there's paths and stuff that we need to uh, take or decisions we need to take or this and that, um, things have to go through us. God doesn't automatically force, you know, things on us. We have to ask him, you know, what do we need to do in this situation? What, you know, what uh, was his will for our life? We have to ask him because we basically have to give him permission to tell us, basically. Now, if it's something really, really important, the Lord will break through and share things with us. But he's not going to do that 24 hours a day. He's not going to do that all the time because uh, everything has to go through us. We have to want those things. We have to ask him. We have to seek him. You know, we have to inquire of him. Everything you desire to know from God, everything that you desire to, if you want instructions, anything like that, you have to seek God to get that instructions. You have to uh, inquire of God to get those instructions, those details, those things, whatever it is. Um, everything you have to inquire and seek him for it, for him to give it to you because everything has to go through you and me. So we have to ask the Lord to give us the information. We have to ask him for the thing and then we can receive it that way. It just doesn't automatically happen. He doesn't auto automatically uh, tell us every single thing. A lot of times we may blame God. Why didn't you warn me, Lord, that this person was, you know, was going to try to kill me? <laughs> Why didn't you warn me because of this? Why didn't you tell me? You know, we, we um, sometimes expect the Lord to uh, do all of that like I did. I was like, Lord, I expect you to tell me all of this stuff so I'll know it. So, you know, I won't get blind, you know, <laughs> you know, I won't be in a situation and not know what's coming. But he told me that everything has to go through us. That's, that's the law in the earth. Um, things have to go through us humans. That's when he, when he gave us dominion over this earth, he didn't try to take that dominion back. You know, things still have to go through us in this earth. So we have to ask God things we have to seek him for things. We have to inquire uh, uh, him for things. Okay. So when he when he uh, told me that it made sense, I kind of start understanding him um, that anything I want to know, anything that I need, anything I, I'm asking for uh, advice, instructions, anything like that, I ask him for specifically. You know, you have to be specific what it is. Um, okay. So that was something that the Lord told me that actually helped me understand him. Um, like what he's saying here, he wants us to understand him. He wants us to learn about him, uh, research him in his word, seek him in his word, uh, study his ways, his character, his needs, his wants, his heart, his love, and his will. So that was one of the things that I understood about the Lord that... Um, we just have to seek him for things and ask him and be specific about those things. Okay. And so here's the next part that, um, since the Lord was saying that he wants us to learn about him, seek him in his word, uh, study him in his word. So, um, here I have, how do we study God? How do we get to know God and learn about God in his word? So I have a situation here. Uh, well, a couple of scriptures that with situations in the Bible, um, how the how we can actually read these uh, situations in the Bible and how we can kind of learn about God and his character and, and, and his ways and how he does things uh, just from reading certain scriptures. OK, so back to what I was talking about, about understanding God, about everything having to go through people in the Bible. Actually, like when you're reading the Bible, you can actually start understanding this when you're reading his word uh, in Exodus we're gonna go to Exodus 3 okay so this is when the Lord manifests himself to Moses um, in the burning bush when you go down to Exodus 3 7 and it says and the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. 
Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Oppress them. Come now, therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my children, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Okay, so when you're reading this, the first thing you're, you're seeing is that, okay, the Lord is in his kingdom. The people, the children of Israel, they are crying out to the Lord. They are crying out. They've been crying out and uh, for a while. And the Lord is saying, here, I have seen their afflictions i've seen everything that they've been going through and i'm hearing their cries i'm hearing their cries they're crying out to the lord help us help us help us you know send you know send someone to help us and um so they're crying out to him they are uh asking the lord inquiring of the lord seeking the lord to help them out of this situation that they are in and so then you have here the lord is saying i have heard their cries so what he has done he's heard that they, they've given him permission to come down and help he's heard it so now what he does he says he has come down in um exodus 3 8 i am come down to deliver them okay so he's heard their cries he's coming down to deliver them now look when you go down you will see that he is going to use he's going to go through a person He's going to go through a person to deliver them. He's going to go through Moses to deliver them. Like what the Lord was saying, everything has to be done through people. We have to invite him um, to, to come into our hearts. We have to seek him for things. We have to ask him. Even Jesus said, ask the Father anything in my name and he will do it. So we have to ask. It doesn't automatically happen. We have to ask. We have to seek. We have to inquire choir we have to cry out is you know we have to do these things uh to receive for god to be a part of uh, our lives okay so here we have you know the lord has come down he's heard his people's cries they're giving him permission to help them they're not doing you know they 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 need god's help basically a lot of times that's when we cry out to god when we need his help but he comes through for us he helps us so you can see god's character here people are crying out to him you know they need him now so they're crying out to him to come and deliver them okay he's heard their cries he's he's made a plan to deliver them okay so he comes down and he uh, communicates with Moses and Moses is going to be the person that he wants to use to deliver his people so the Lord is going to uh, um, uh, do things through Moses okay like the Lord had told me he said everything has to go through human beings here on this earth so the Lord comes down and he um, uh, goes to Moses and calls Moses in Exodus 3.10. He says, come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So God's going to use a human to go and deliver his people. Okay, so this is how you can learn about God. So when you read this, you will say, you will see that. The people had to cry out to God. The Lord heard him, heard the people. Now the Lord is picking a person to go help the people. If you're crying out to God for finances, you know, you need bills to be paid. You're asking him to help. You're seeking him. You're inquiring of him. Okay. He's going to help. What he's going to do, he's going to find one of his servants like Moses here, he's going to find one of his servants, you know, a modern day person. <laughs> and he's going to talk to them for them to, he's going to touch their heart. He's going to put uh, you in their spirit or something to bless you with the money to pay your rent. Okay, so the Lord is going to go through people to do things. Things are, you know, go through people, um, uh, you know, in this earth. So that's what he what that's what he said to me. But I'm showing you how you can actually go into the scripture and you can see how God moves. You can see how um, how God does things, the way um, things work. You know God's ways. Um, you can see this here when you read in the scripture. Then also, if you want to see another um, example of um, things going through people, and you know people 
um, in the Bible, they knew this. You have David um, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, 8. Here is talking about David inquired um, uh, of the Lord, basically um, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he said, He answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all so david um re inquired of the lord to see actually um you know what will happen and see if the lord will be with them and like like what i was saying is we have to inquire of the lord we have to seek him we have to ask him stuff we have to um you know access help and things um and um access you know knowledge his wisdom that he has uh his understanding we can go and we can seek him for these things okay and so here, this is another part where you can actually see uh, people in the Bible, they were seeking God. They were seeking his advice, uh, his guidance, you know, what they should do. Um, they just didn't automatically expect the Lord to uh, do everything or control everything um, or, to, you know, to tell them what to do. They would go and ask the Lord what to do, what should we do, you know, um, and cry out to him. So this still, we still have to do this today. This is the way the Lord does things is through people. So we have to um, uh, 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 seek him and learn about him. We have to do all of this stuff so that we can understand how he does things. So this is just like my example of my, uh, a part of, uh, uh, I guess you can say, something that I didn't understand about how God did things or how things worked. And then the Lord actually helped me to understand that, how that worked, how he worked in that area. That's understanding God. And so here, this is something that he wants us to, to, um, to understand him. He wants us to understand him. He's saying here, understand me, learn about me, research me in my word, seek me in my word, uh, study my ways, study how he does things like what we're talking about now. He, he goes through people. Everything has to go through people in this earth, even when the enemy does stuff. The enemy can't just do stuff without us doing something to open up that door, okay? Even though we may not know what door we open, maybe an ancestor opened that door and it's never been covered under the blood. Maybe it's something that's never been covered under the blood. Maybe it's us focusing on negative things too long and then we're getting attacked in our mind. Um, maybe we have some type of unforgiveness in our heart towards a person that's causing us to our relationship with God to have a block on it because that will totally hinder your relationship with God. It totally stops it. So you have to get that out of your heart. So it's always something that we uh, or some type of human has done that has opened the door for uh, even, you know, the Lord to be a part of our life. You know, maybe our uh, family, maybe our mom has been praying, praying, praying over us and we've been protected. So it's something that a human or someone is doing um, that is either uh, having a hand of God in our life um, or demonic spirits attacking us. You know, it's everything has to go through people in this earth. Okay, so that was the understanding that the Lord gave me of that. So here, he wants us to study his ways, uh, his character, his needs, his wants, his heart, his love, and his will. Okay, and something else I wanted to just talk about is like, uh, with the relationship with God, you know, understanding him, learning about him, understanding his ways, um, you know, and not misunderstanding him. When you enter into a relationship, it's really easy to misunderstand the person. When you don't know them, you don't understand them, um, it's really, really easy to misunderstand the person. So I was Googling some things online, and so I ran across this web website. It actually <laughs> has like a section of the website that it says 160 first date questions. So these are questions that you can ask a person when you go on a first date with them. So you, it will help you understand the person, understand them. So they have 160 questions that you can ask a person on a first date. Now that's a lot of questions. You can learn a lot about a person just by um, asking 160 different questions about them, who they are, you know, things like that. And some of the questions um, that they have on there, it's like, um, I kind of skimmed through, um, you know, just to see what type of stuff they had. But it was like some stuff about what, what type of fun things they like to do, travel, food, um, desires, stuff like that. 
So, but that's a lot of questions. If you can answer all of those questions on, uh, not the first date, but <laughs> during the dating process and you learn all of those things about a person, you can really get to know them. You can really get to know them and understand some things about them, what they like and all of that. This is pretty cool because we can also do this in our relationship with God. Let's say if it's something that you want to know about God, you can Google uh, scriptures, find scriptures where there are situations of people that are in those situations and you can see how God responded to them. You know, um, you know what happened, you can see all of these things, but you really the part that you need to focus on is how God responded. How did God respond to them in that situation? You know, um, you know, you can also check out the way they responded to God. Did they have to cry out to God? Did they have to do certain things? Um, you know, uh, did they have to repent? You know, did they have to feel sorry? You know, um, like with David, I like talking about David because David's relationship with God was really um, unique. And you can see how awesome God is um, in his relationship with David. Let's go um, to uh, this scripture. I wanna go here and talk about David. So this story about David, to me, really powerful, um, just about who God is and how, I mean, his heart is so perfect and loving, like unconditional love, you guys. In the story with David in um, 2 Samuel, uh, chapter 12 here you know David um, the the prophet the man of God came to David um, um, and he was telling David about this uh, rich man that had taken this uh, poor man's um, lamb and it was the only it was the only thing that man had was this lamb and this man was rich and he came and he took it and everything and um, and so David got really, really upset. It was like, who, you know, take, do this, do this. You know, he was really upset when he heard um, the man of God tell him um, how this rich person treated this poor person. Here in 2 Samuel 12, uh, verse 7, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom. And I gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Now this is the part that really helps you to understand God's heart. Like this is his heart right here. His heart for David their relationship and just his heart for people who have a relationship with him like this. Um, he had given David all of these things. I mean, he made him king, everything. He had everything. He had everything. And it was this, his, this woman, Bathsheba, that he, David did not have. This woman belonged to another man. This woman was somebody else's wife. David had everything. But he still wanted this woman. He wanted her, even though he had everything. God had given him everything. He wasn't lacking from not, no woman. He wasn't, you know, single. And just, you know, he, he wasn't lacking anything. He had everything. But he wanted this woman. He wanted someone else's wife. And this man was a servant. I mean, he, he really loved David. You know, he was, you know, he was focused on... You know serving his uh, king and he had a wife he didn't have much he had a wife and so David took her then had the man killed um, because the wife she was pregnant and um, you know so he tried to cover everything up had the man killed and so the Lord is saying here that I've gave you all of this stuff. I've gave you, you know, I made it you king. I anointed you king. Um, I delivered uh, Saul into your hands. Um, I gave you his house, his wives, everything. You know, you had your ruler over the house of Israel and Judah. And then the Lord says here, if that 
have been too little if that wasn't enough for David. Okay, now listen, this is how you understand God's heart. All of those things that God gave David, all of that made him king. He has everything, all the, the women, money, fame, everything. God says here, and if that wasn't enough for you, if that was too little, I would have given you more. I would have given you more, over, over, more, more. He would have, gave, he would have even, even given him more than that. And that was a lot. But God said, if that wasn't enough, I still would have given you more. Listen to his heart here. But, you go down. Then the Lord talks about what he was displeased with. Um, him doing something evil, shedding an innocent, shedding an innocent person's blood. David had already had blood, blood on his hands because he was a warrior. You know, he, he killed people. So he already had blood, blood on his hand, but it was like war. It was like a war blood. It wasn't innocent blood. A person that was on your side, a person that hadn't did anything wrong to you and was serving you and loving you and, and would lay down their life for you. You killing that person, that's murder. That's innocent bloodshed. That's evil to God. We don't kill innocent people. If you if someone's coming to kill you and you're defending yourself, that's you know, that's that's innocent. I mean that's fine. But if you go out and you kill something or someone that can't defend themselves, you know, or someone that loves you or, you know, they you know, you kill you kill them, that's shedding innocent blood. That is evil in God's sight. Okay, so here David did that and um you know, so of course he had to, um, he had to, um, you know, the consequences for that. Um, but the Lord said that he would have given David uh, everything, anything that he wanted, you know, no matter what. It was no limits on what God would have given him if he just wanted more. And so when I read this, I mean, I, I mean, I'm always crying when I'm finding out certain things, more things about God that just totally takes me overboard you know I'm weeping and I'm crying all over the place because you know this is something we wouldn't think of the Lord we think of the Lord as, you know like if someone's rich and then they they want a jet they want um they want a bigger house or you know they want a nice car or more cars or more clothes you know we we don't think of God wanting to give them more even though they already have a lot we don't think you know of god being a god that wants to continue to keep giving them more you know uh you know because of their relationship with god we don't think of him like that but this is how he was with david you know and solomon he i mean solomon was like the richest person ever <laughs> um you know and so we don't see the lord as being that type of i mean God, where he blesses you unlimited blessings, like unlimited, whatever your heart desires, like you can have it. I, when we kind of really, really see that God was really like this with people, you read these situations and lives of people and see how God was with them. He was really like this with people. He hasn't changed. He has not changed. We have changed and the way we see him has changed. But he hasn't changed. But we can still understand him um, the way he really is by reading the way he was with other people in the Bible. The way he was with them. He is still exactly like this. And we can still have these same exact relationships the way David had relationships with God. We can have that. The way um, Moses had relationships with God. We can have that. The way Abraham had relationships with God. We can have that. The way Enoch walked with God. We can have that. The way Elijah walked with God, we can have that. We can still have these relationships. It was the people, the people in the Bible that actually opened up uh, their hearts and opened their, up their lives for God to be a part of their lives. And they had these uh, amazing relationships with God because they wanted it. We can have it now. We just have to want it. And we have to know how to access God. And, and the, the reason why the Lord wants me to go so deep into this um, uh, uh, letter and this message that he gave me, because 
He wants you guys to have this. He wants you guys not to just read these stories about how these people walk with him in the Bible, but you actually walking the same way or greater. You know, like the Lord Jesus says, greater works. You know, we can have greater. We just, it's, it's, um, it's work. It's definitely work to it. It's just not going to automatically happen. The enemy is not going to lay down and automatically let you just have this awesome relationship with God without, you know, um, bringing some trials and some tribulations and, and going through some struggles and tests and all of that. But we have to stand. We have to endure no matter what um, the enemy comes and brings against us because we want that relationship with God. We have to fight for it. So I just want to share with you guys something I found um, on uh, Google uh, about um, it's a quote from the movie The Notebook. I actually haven't seen the movie before, but um, I saw this quote and it's about a relationship, about working hard in a relationship. I wanted to just read this. It says, so it's not going to be easy. It's going to be really hard. Now they put really hard in here. We're going to have to work at this every day, but I want to do it. I want to do that because I want you. I want all of you forever, every day, you and me, every day. So when I read that, I wanted to say that um, to you guys because a relationship with God is hard work. It's a lot of work. You're going to put a lot of time um, into your relationship with God. You're going to have to put this time in every single day. Um, you're going to have to learn about him. Like these 160 dating questions. You know, you know. after you ask a person all those questions, you're going to know some stuff about them. Same thing with God. You're going to have to put in that dating, those dating questions, those daily dating researching him, daily seeking him in his word, daily learning about his character in his word, Daily learning about why he does certain things in his word. Daily learning about these things in his word and from him also. So this is not easy. It's not going to be just something that's going to automatically happen. You have to work at it. You have to work hard and you can't give up because you already made up your mind that, like they said here, you want to be with God forever. You want to be with him forever. You want, um, you know, you, you just want him forever. So I think this is really, really great. I wanted to uh, share this with you guys because this is what a relationship looks like with someone that you really, really, truly love and someone you really, really, truly want to spend eternity with. And so this is what we're doing, basically. We're striving to spend eternity with God. And because we do have an enemy... We do have someone that's trying to destroy all humanity, uh, trying to destroy all of our relationships with God, period. So we do have this enemy. So we have to be ready to fight that enemy for this relationship. Think about this. Let's say if you have um, uh, a person, you're married, you're in a relationship, and you have someone that is obsessed with your spouse. They are obsessed. Like you have those movies, you know, where you have the single white female movie where you have this person that is just obsessed with you. They will not leave you alone. They're following you around, calling you at night, doing all types of things to get you fired on your job. They just, they're obsessed with you and they're not mentally stable. So they, they will never leave you alone. You have to deal with this, you know, um, in your life forever. <laughs> you know, they're just tormenting you. Now think of that psychotic person but think about the enemy and all the demonic spirits. They are to the billionth power than that psychotic person that's trying to torment you and destroy your whole life, okay? They are worse. So if that psychotic person is trying to destroy your life, destroy your marriage, destroy everything about you, think of the enemy. The enemy is worse than that. The enemy will not stop. He's not going to sleep. Demons don't sleep, okay? They're up 24 hours a day. They don't sleep. They don't need to sleep. They're spirits. So they are 24 hours a day trying to destroy your relationship with God and other people. So you have to be on guard against that and protect your relationship. Stay focused on God. Stay focused on positive. Don't let anything but love, you know, let love stay in your heart. Don't let anything 
other than love get inside of your heart you know you have to really really focus on this relationship okay and just know that you have an obsessive uh, you know kingdom that is a hundred percent out to destroy your relationship with God so if you, if you know that and then you can really focus on working hard stay and stick into it focusing on God focusing on your relationship with him learning everything you can about him getting as close as possible to him trusting him with everything in your life letting him be a part of everything in your life okay and um, so this is part three actually is a part three yes it's part three and so my next part is going to go into talking about God uh, the next part of this letter and I will put everything in the description so if you haven't seen the first one you can actually read it um, to kind of see where we're going to go in the next one all right you guys so have a great day and may God bless you.